My dear friends, welcome to this episode, The Sacraments in the Streams of Grace. We have been learning about the celebration, when is the liturgy celebrated? And we understood the great meaning of the liturgical seasons, and now we are understanding the mystery of this liturgical celebration, particularly celebration of the Holy Eucharist in a solemn way on the Lord's Day, that is the Sunday. By a tradition in paragraph 1166, 1166, by a tradition handed down from the apostles, which took its origin from the very day of Christ's resurrection. The church celebrates this Paschal mystery every seventh day, which day is appropriately called the Lord's Day or Sunday, by a tradition. The tradition, we must recognize, it is not like our worldly expression of tradition. There are so many not good traditions, but here tradition means the mystery lived with Christ, Christ vocally and personally lived with the apostles. And that time, as I said in earlier times, after the resurrection, Christ lived with the apostles and the people around him 40 days. There all these things began and that became a tradition. So, by a tradition handed down from the apostles, which took its origin from the very day of Christ's resurrection. So this tradition began from the very day of the resurrection. We know Jesus walked with the disciples the very day of the resurrection. Just like a solemn celebration, he preached the word of God from morning to evening, <laughs> a long homely, and then their hearts were burning, but they could not recognize the risen Lord. The risen Lord was walking with them, but they could not recognize. But when he was about to further go, they said, Lord, stay with us. Stay with us today. And then the Lord entered with them to stay with them. And they sat at the table. He took the bread and gave thanks and praise and broke it and gave to them. Now their eyes opened. They recognized the risen Lord. They experienced the mighty power. All their tiredness went away. They were so much depressed that they wanted to leave this community they already left Jerusalem and they are coming, going back to their home, abandoning this mission. But they were recapitulated with eating this bread that is participating in this mystery of the Eucharist. The very first day of the resurrection. And they filled with the joy of the resurrection singing hallelujah loudly. They began to proclaim loudly, He is risen! He is truly risen! We have seen Him! All their tiredness went away. Twelve kilometers they walked from Jerusalem to Emmaus and now they decided to go back to Jerusalem the very night proclaiming the resurrection. That is the power of the day. So from that day onwards, every seventh day, this celebration they did. 
That is the tradition. From that handed over down from the apostle to us, which took its origin from the very day of resurrection of Christ. The church celebrates the Paschal mystery every seventh day, which day is appropriately called the Lord's Day or Sunday. So, this is a very important day for a Christian. The day of Christ's resurrection is both the first day of the week, the memorial of the first day of creation, and the eighth day, eighth day on which Christ, after his rest, on the great Sabbath, inaugurates the day that the Lord has made. The day that knows no evening. The Lord's Supper is its center, for there the whole community of the faithful encounters the risen Lord, who invites them to his banquet. My dear friends, these days we say weekend, weekend. Weekend is Saturday, Sunday's weekend. After five days of working, on Friday evening, in the office, everybody finds up all the works perfectly, getting ready for holidays. And everybody wishes, hi, happy weekend. And then, in a mood of celebration of holiday, going to resorts and so many places, we have, in a worldly way, misunderstood that Saturday, Sunday as a weekend. But it is not so. Sunday is the first day of the week. First day of the week. Sunday is the first day. The day of resurrection. Now, let's take many places we can see this in the Bible. See, chapter 20, John's Gospel, the empty tomb. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning, while it was still dark, and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So we know this narration. On the first day of the week. So first of all, we must understand the practical purpose of, why we have to celebrate on the first day? <laughs> In a very practical way, I would say, the week God has created, and God himself will give you power for the six days of the week for you to work hard, to live. You are invited to live with the power of the Lord. So, on the day, Sunday, the Lord's Day, beginning from Saturday evening onwards, it begins from Saturday evening. And so, the day of resurrection, so, it begins from Saturday evening because that is the day of resurrection begins. There is no evening that day. Christ is sleeping. The resurrection already began. He wants to give on the Sunday full power to us so that all the sixth day you can live with that power and wisdom. I know some practical situations, some people had terrible problems personally, in the family, in the business. It is not a propaganda or a prosperity gospel, but reality of our life. Human being, God has created every human being with a providence, with a plan of providence that God himself will supply God's own power and God himself will be supplied to him. That is the providence of God. 
and with drawing power from that god we must live that is the plan of god so there are in our retreats in divine center or every retreat where so many people come with problems 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 and we have gone we go through a counseling advices etc and we come across this situation when a man having lot of problem i asked how much time you pray <laughs> he said he has no time do you go for daily holy mass oh no we are so busy we cannot go for daily holy mass what about sunday can you are you able to go on sunday oh no thomas sunday is a day holiday weekend after hard work of five days we need to take rest and sleep a little long time enjoy holiday the result is they have no spiritual power chaos in the family relationship problem not able to love one another not able to share one another not able to have wisdom no discernment problem in the family problems with the children problems in the business such a man came to me and i asked him he said he never go for for holy mass he said i believe in god but i can come with you for talk and listening but i don't go for holy mass he says not even on sunday and the situation he was in such a chaos i said this is the root cause of your problem the root cause of all your problem is you are running without petrol without benzene without battery without power the power of god is given to us through the liturgy through the eucharist through the lord's day at least on sunday if you don't receive this power this is what exactly in the book of jeremiah chapter 213 says my people have done double the sin two sins what are these sins it's interesting we normally think sin is something bad they are doing but isaiah jeremiah says it is a sin of omission you have abandoned me the source of living water that is the first thing and you dug broken cisterns which cannot bear water my dear friends i know those who are listening to divine tv would be daily holy mass even daily holy mass and surely you will go for sunday mass but at the same time you must recognize what for we are going for sunday mass it is an obligation what for this obligation is this obligation is a great privilege as a divine providence divine providence in paragraph i think 301 and 2 in catechism of the catholic church explains what means divine providence with creation 301 with creation god does not abandon his creatures to themselves he not only gives them being and existence but also at every moment upholds and sustains them in being enables them to act and brings them to their final end recognizing this utter dependence with respect to the creator is a source of wisdom and freedom of joy and confidence creation has its own goodness and proper perfection but it did not spring forth complete from the hands of creator the universe was created in a state of journey toward an ultimate perfection yet to be attained yet to be attained to which god has destined it we call divine providence the disposition by which god guides his creation 
towards his perfection. Now very practically to understand we, God created us. God created us, but God has not abandoned his creation. The creation what he made is still in his own hand. He has not abandoned. Okay, you do what you want. No, he says, you are my beloved son. I created you. I have not completed your creation. Every moment I will sustain you. I will continue to feed you, provide you my own self so that you grow in union with me. You grow in union with me. You grow drawing life, newness of life, risen life, wisdom and love. God created the world with wisdom and love. So this wisdom and love to refresh us, to make a new creation is a daily giving of the Lord and particularly every weekend or every first day of the week. I, I am also telling weekend because that is the language now we understand. The first day of the week so we must recognize the need. Why are we going for a Sunday Mass? It is God's providence. God's providence in providing all what the person need from God directly. Very practical. I go every day and I thank God for that since I am ministering, I am almost every day in a solemn celebration. In a retreat we celebrate in a solemn way every day. Every day I am experiencing like Sunday Mass. <laughs> Easter, every day. And <laughs> this is the treasure, this is the highest source and summit of Christian life. That's what... From the beginning, the fathers of the church and the teaching of the church, the doctrine of the church, the Vatican Council, the Catechism, everybody says, Eucharist is the source and summit of Christian life and the mission. Now we saw these Emmaus apostles, disciples, they were so depressed. That is the situation of the humanity. Many of them depressed have no power, have no aim, have no desire, have no joy. Why? His fire bomb, this fire, what we have to receive from the Lord, we are abandoning. We are abandoning. Is it this lack of wisdom? I am not criticizing. I just want to encourage you. Some people ask me, Thomas, you are so joyful. So powerful, not tired. Yes, I am joyful. Why? The power of the Eucharist. You might have heard several times from this, from Mother Teresa. Many people ask Mother Teresa, what is the secret of your power? What is the secret of your smile? What is the secret of your strength? How you are able to extend to the whole world? <laughs> Mother simply say, Eucharist is my strength. Eucharist. So they are not going there only as an obligation. Every day, early morning, she is there, filling completely with this pastoral banquet. My dear friends, this is where the church is grow. Church will grow, the person will grow, the family will grow, the mission will grow. The Mahu's disciples who were completely down and depressed, but the moment they celebrated with Jesus and He gave Himself to them, He broke the bread and gave to them, immediately power came in. Their depressions went away, they were 
And they began to proclaim. John Paul II in his encyclical several times said this spur, the spur, the spark, the power of proclamation they received from the Eucharistic Lord. Stay with us, Lord. And the Lord said, I am with you. Go and proclaim. Go. The Eucharist ends every day. The Mass is ended. Go. This go is a go with full of power, enthusiasm, and the fire of the Eucharist and the joy of the Lord. We must be people of the joy of the Lord. Joy is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength, the psalmist says. This joy of the Lord is not by eating ice cream or eating, drinking. That's what St. Paul says. The kingdom of God is not a joy of eating or drinking. It is the righteousness, peace and the joy of the Holy Spirit which is transmitted to us by the pastoral mystery of Christ. So, my dear friends, the day of the Lord the Lord's Day, the Sunday. If we celebrate the Sunday with this full understanding, that is the first day, and that is the day of resurrection, the Lord Himself wants to be with us. The day, Sunday is preeminent day for the liturgical assembly, when the faithful gather to listen to the word of God and take part in the Eucharist that's calling to mind the passion, resurrection and glory of the Lord and the glory of the Lord Jesus and giving thanks to God who has begotten them again by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead until unto living hope. When we ponder, O oh Christ, this is from the Syriac office of Antioch, 41. We, when we ponder, O oh Christ, the marvels accomplished on this day, the Sunday of your holy resurrection, we say, blessed is Sunday, for on it began creation, the world's salvation, the renewal of the human race. On Sunday, heaven and earth rejoiced, and the whole universe was filled with light. Whole universe was filled with light. Blessed is Sunday, for on it were opened the gates of paradise, so that Adam and all the exiles might enter it without fear. Even Adam and Eve, who were redeemed and brought back to heaven, who were the authors of the original sin, they are in heaven. So we all have full hope. Let us pray, my dear friends. Let us celebrate our Sundays in a more solemn and meaningful way and also preferably participate, those who can participate, every day it will be great. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for this mystery of this heavenly banquet that we are able to celebrate here on the earth. This eternal liturgy which is celebrated in heaven, we are able to join here along with angels and all saints and Mother Mary and experiencing our passion that Passion, death, and resurrection of our Lord, who through his passion, death, and resurrection regained the paradise, regained the humanity. Oh Lord, I believe that. I believe that. I thank you for this great mystery of Sunday. Sunday, day of light. Amen.